I wanted to title this talk, What Can Open Innovation, which is something I'm associated with, what can we learn from InnerSource? And toward the end of my remarks, I'm going to also uh, suggest there might be a couple of things vice versa, where maybe we have something to share with you. Uh, this is Russell giving a talk just two weeks ago at our own World Open Innovation Conference. Interestingly, this is our 11th conference. So we had our first one in 2014, uh, paralleling uh, quite well the 2015 start Russell was talking about. Uh, and Russell was very well received uh, in, in our community as well. Um, let me give a quick uh, overview of open innovation to motivate the rest of my remarks. Um, I wrote a book by this title in 2003, more than 20 years ago. And I did a Google search using open innovation as the search term. And I got back a couple of hundred page links. So that wasn't so many. And I actually went through each and every one of them. Uh, and what had happened was the word open and the word innovation had appeared close to each other uh, in a press release, a sentence, a document. Uh, and that triggered uh, the response for Google to find it and share it with me. But there was really no meaning to the two words side by side. Uh, my book is credited with starting uh, to change that. And indeed, when I'm preparing for this talk, uh, I think two days ago, I did the same search on the same search engine with the same search term, uh, and I got over 15 million pages. I did not look at all of those, but it's clear that something has actually uh, come to mean open innovation. So something that wasn't there uh, now really is tangible. Oh, and I also wanted to, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, you can also do this at home. If you go on LinkedIn, and I suspect most of you are active on LinkedIn, you can search, as you probably know, for people, for jobs, for companies, and you can use open innovation as your search term. And when I did this search, I got over 700,000 people who have open innovation somewhere uh, in their profile. Uh, and they span a wide range of industries, much as InnerSource does. Uh, so it suggests that this isn't just uh, in one domain, it's actually spread widely across many industries. So let me define my terms so I can explain what it is I'm talking about. Uh, Eskimos have many words for snow, and open can mean many things to many people. So here's what I mean uh, with open innovation. It's a bit lengthy, but I think you'll see why it matters in a moment. Uh, it's a distributed innovation process involving knowledge flows across organizational boundaries for both non-pecuniary and pecuniary reasons. So the key things to focus on, I think, are the fact that it's distributed, not hierarchical and top-down, and it's knowledge moving across organizations, not simply moving within an organization. And so if we think about some of the practices and activities that have become pretty widespread, from open source uh, to crowdsourcing to get working with startups or venture capital or users, all of these involve knowledge flows across organizational boundaries. So open innovation should not be thought of as just one of these practices, but indeed it encompasses all of them. Uh, if you want a visual, think of a company's innovation process as a funnel where knowledge and technology emerge from the left and move through the process to the right, at some point there's a research phase that gives way to a development phase and new products and new services are launched uh, into the market. Well, with open innovation, uh, there's a slight evolution in this process. We start with a funnel aimed at our target market, but with open innovation, we actually change the process. We open it up. And the visual here is to drill holes uh, in the funnel to get ideas and projects to move through from uh, the, the launch from the lab into the marketplace. And there are several pathways where knowledge and ideas can move. The two principal ones 
are the outside coming into your organization or from within your organization going out to other organizations in the market. So outside in and inside out. And I'm going to make use of that uh, in just a moment with a new paper uh, that came out last year that I think will motivate the connections uh, to Intersource. Uh, this is a paper in the context of corporate venture capital, but as you'll see in a moment, the, the model or the two by two that we develop is broader than just the corporate venture capital context. Um, so here's our, uh, our two by two with two dimensions with the origin of the knowledge uh, on the X axis and the application of that knowledge on the Y axis. And things could be done either inside or outside the organization, both in its origin and in its application. And in the classic open innovation uh, funnel, like I just showed you, the two principal directions of knowledge flow were from the outside in and the inside out, as I shared just a moment ago. But one of the lovely things about a two by two is it can actually tease apart some off diagonal, uh, maybe interesting other ways that knowledge might flow. And so uh, the first one, uh, well, these are the classic ones. And uh, for those of you who don't know the um, open innovation world, uh, I'll make a couple of remarks here, and then I'll go into the missing pieces of the two by two. Uh, Bill Joy uh, is well known for saying most of the smart people work someplace else. Uh, and so it's not a council of despair, but it is to say your smart people need to engage and connect with other smart people outside your organization, much as you are doing today in the Inner Source Summit. Uh, a second implication of this is you don't have to invent something in order to innovate with it. And indeed, if you come up with a better business model, you can often beat a better technology in the market. And for things from the inside going out, if you can't think of a use for your idea or your technology, consider sharing it outside uh, and then watch, see what people do and see also what business models do they create to try to commercialize that. You can think of that as free business model research. So now we come to the under uh, explored, explored parts of that two by two. The first one, and here's where Intersource I think fits so well, is the inside in. It, it turns out that knowledge does not always uh, flow from one part of an organization to another, something I know is well understood in your organization. Um, <clears throat> and in particular, in our paper, we look at corporate venture capital investing and find that <clears throat> activities from the startups that are being supported by these investments often don't connect well to the business units of the corporations that are making those investments. And yet for any real strategic benefit from a corporate venture capital investment, it's critical that the business units take up and utilize uh, the technologies of these new startups. So th this becomes a challenge of how to cross an internal silo that develops between the folks doing the VC investing thinking about their portfolio and their financial returns and the new trends in, in the markets that they're seeing and the business units that are driven by budgets and annual plans and strategies and have most of the money, personnel and resources. So this is a, something that really has to be overcome if we're going to see the full strategic benefit from corporate venture capital. But this of course is not news to you because you know all about trying to move knowledge across uh, silos inside an organization. And indeed, as I understand it, uh, you have found that you can adapt open source principles and methods and, and approaches to trying to address this challenge of how to get ideas to move across different parts of an organization. Uh, one way that this means has meaning for me is the old pull versus push distinction in innovation, where we can try to push the technology through, but it's going to go much better if we can get other parts of the organization to adopt it and pull it 
as they need it uh, into the market. And so uh, having, providing not only tools, but also empathy, mentoring, coaching, support uh, to support this really help to get these ideas to flow. And so this is an area where I think we in the open innovation community have a lot to learn from you. Uh, and I'm hoping that in the in the days and months to come that we'll be able to strengthen this connection between uh, your community and ours. But that leaves another part of the two by two, and that is the outside out, where the knowledge originates outside and it is applied outside. So here, as with inside in, it is technically not part of the open innovation definition that I shared with you because the knowledge does not originate inside, nor does it move inside. It starts outside and stays outside. And yet, uh, it turns out to also be important to trying to facilitate uh, innovation. And you hear words like orchestration, uh, trying to shape uh, the environment in which you are innovating, you're trying to spur the adoption of your technologies and ideas with your customers. Uh, and so there are many ways that an organization can use outside out to accomplish this uh, and have it align with its strategic objectives. One that we saw in our paper in the corporate venture capital context was having a company that was thinking of investing in a startup, actually introducing that startup to one of the corporation's customers directly before investing. And through that introduction, the idea was to encourage the customer and the startup to work on a pilot together, perhaps do a proof of concept to see how that startup's technology might fit and support the customer's needs. And then depending on how that pilot goes, if it goes well, then the corporation would make the investment. And the reason this is relevant, uh, I think, to Intersource is that when uh, that investment is then made and the startup starts to scale, uh, and now we're, we're still trying to overcome the barriers to the silos of our own business units, we now have a customer of the company who the business units work with all the time. And the customer is a reference, is enthusiastic, uh, and really helps to pull uh, that idea, that technology into the business units of the corporate venture investor. So this is an, an example of this outside out thinking. Uh, I sketch uh, a couple of more examples of this uh, as well. Uh, in a slightly different vein, you can create certification programs so that organizations that support and extend what you're doing can be officially certified and that signals to your customers and your market that they really do know what they're doing. Uh, it's also a way through your training to help shape and align these third-party support organizations with what you're trying to get done and to improve the experience for your customers. Uh, another way this happens, usually a little earlier in the project or in the technology, is to create standards and drive those standards in directions that play to your strengths. Uh, so you can use standards as part of this shaping activity that I'm talking about. So this can give rise to a number of the outside out practices, uh, such as matching uh, potential startups or partners with your customers, creating working groups to develop and test potential new markets. Uh, a clever one that I quite like is use your own operations as a test bed and invite external organizations, particularly startups, to use your corporation as a test. So you not only get to see a lot of it in use, uh, but you can also help the startup uh, achieve deployments 
in a very real world context, they could really struggle to do on their own. Uh, and then one thing that happens in the corporate venture space is a lot of investment is syndicated, meaning no one company puts all of the money into one startup. Rather, the startup seeks and achieves several investors and creates an investment syndicate for each round of investment. And in order to do that, you have to share a lot of information uh, with other potential investors as well. Uh, and one of the things you get from that is they also share information with you. And that helps to deepen your understanding, not only of this particular opportunity, but potentially other opportunities, other market conditions that could be relevant to you uh, going forward. So uh, I do think uh, the uh, open innovation community and inner source community have a lot uh, to learn from each other. Uh, getting knowledge to move across silos, I think you are really at the forefront of this, and, and I personally feel like we have a lot to learn. Uh, I think this is quite relevant in many ways, but among them, how to adopt, motivate the adoption of new tools and new technologies. Uh, I think uh, your organization understands a lot about how to do that. One, a couple of things that I think open innovation can offer to Intersource um, one is that having external validation, let's say, for example, an external customer uh, really likes this startup technology, that can help move knowledge internally. So there's a dynamic or an interplay between what's inside and what's outside. And instead of keeping the inside as hermetically sealed, which I know is often the practice, there are situations where selectively sharing and engaging externally can create momentum and validation that actually is relevant internally and can help move knowledge uh, internally. So that's one I offer uh, to the inner source community uh, to consider. And then with the outside out, uh, thinking about ways to shape the environment. Think about ways to stimulate uh, the adoption of particular standards or certification of third parties uh, that or using your own customers or your own operations as ways to test and engage uh, and move forward, I think uh, could really uh, move the environment also to your advantage as well. So uh, like many academics, I, I do get paid by the word. Uh, if this is interesting to you and you are coming to open innovation, uh, as a new person who's not aware of it, there is a lot uh, that's out there to read. Uh, at the very end in 2024, uh, I and three colleagues put together the first Oxford Handbook of Open Innovation, which has 57 chapters from 136 contributors. Eight of those chapters, by the way, are from people in industry and discuss how they have utilized and adopted open innovation to achieve some of their innovation goals uh, in that particular industry. <clears throat> so while much of it is about the theory of open innovation, um, we also have a number of industry cases of it as well. So there's a lot of ways uh, you can get started. Um, would certainly welcome emails and other outreach uh, from you in the Intersource community if it's useful. And uh, again, I really hope our communities can continue to engage and learn from one another. <clears throat>